Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to discuss five of the most powerful goddesses in Greek mythology. Goddesses so powerful that their powers often dwarfed those of their male counterparts. And just a quick comment before we get started, this list isn't ranked and is by no means comprehensive. So let us know in the comments who you think deserved to be included next to these legendary ladies. Let's get into it. Starting off our list is Gaia. Gaia was the personification of the earth, and along with Tartarus, Eros, Erebus, and Nyx, was one of the five first generation primordial deities. Beyond being the manifestation of the earth, she also independently produced the observable features of the material world, Uranus, the sky, Uria, the mountains, and Pontus, the sea, were her progeny, and she took Uranus as her consort. Together they made the Hecatonchires, the Cyclopes, and the twelve first-generation Titans. She was the preeminent force of creation in Greek mythology, and while she couldn't exert her power or impose her will in a combative sense, she could function as a sort of divine broodmother, producing powerful children that could act destructively on her behalf. Per Apollodorus' account, she created the giants to wage war against the gods in retaliation for the titans being imprisoned in Tartarus. And afterwards, she created Typhon, the most powerful monster in the Greek mythos, who would challenge Zeus for supremacy over the cosmos. Next we have Athena. Athena had an unconventional start in life. She was born at the side of a man's skull, instead of emerging from a woman's womb. Her mother, Metis, was prophesied to bear incredibly powerful children, first a daughter, then a son mighty enough to overthrow his father, Zeus, who forestalled such an eventuality by swallowing Metis, who was already pregnant with Athena and she entered Zeus's belly. This is all to say that Athena being extraordinarily powerful even when compared to other gods was written in prophecy, and she did not disappoint. She emerged fully grown, clad in armor, battle ready. She was one of the only gods to be described as killing more than one giant in the Gigantomachy, crushing Enceladus when she hurled the island of Sicily on him and killing Pallas, flaying him, and using his skin to protect her during the war. Her great strength was matched by her deep wisdom, an attribute which made her far superior to her brother Ares. The two of them supported opposite sides in the Trojan War. Athena was for the Greeks and Ares for the Trojans. Towards the end of the war, they engaged in a one-on-one -on -one fight in which Ares was humbled. Athena backed away from Ares' spear thrust and then counterattacked by launching a boulder at his head, crumpling him to the ground in a heap. Our next entry is Nyx. Nyx was the personification of night and one of the first generation primordial deities. Like Gaia, she was a prolific producer of children. Coupled with Erebus, the personification of darkness, she produced ether, light, and Hemera, Day. She then went on to independently produce a great number of children, all of whom we won't name, but here's a few. The Morai, the Fates, Thanatos, Death, Eris, Strife, and Hypnos, Sleep. In and of itself, the fact that she was a first generation primordial deity would likely earn her a place on this list. Her powers as a creator outstrip every god in Greek mythology except for Gaia. But the instance that truly showcased her power was a confrontation, or rather lack thereof, she had with Zeus. In the Iliad, there's a conversation between Hypnos and Hera, in which they discuss what happened the last time Hypnos was persuaded to use his sleep-inducing powers against Zeus, who woke up in a rage when his mind ceased to be ensnared. He searched for Hypnos, but relented when the pursuit took him to Nyx, whom Hypnos was hiding behind. Such was Nyx's power that Zeus was struck with awe and was unwilling to arouse her anger. Next we have Hecate. Called by Hesiod the strong, thundering shaker of Earth, Hecate, the daughter of the second generation titans Asteria and Perses, was a third generation titan. Her sphere of influence was as vast as any other god in Greek mythology, and according to the poet Hesiod, she was honored by Zeus above all others. She was bestowed with a far-reaching authority, granted a portion of the earth, the sea, and the heavens. Hecate was a divinity characterized by duality, comprising beneficence as well as a darker side. Witchcraft, the moon, magic, the night, ghosts, and necromancy were associated with her. 
doorways, transitions and crossroads were also deeply connected with her. She permeated virtually every aspect of life in ancient Greece. People deemed worthy could be blessed with prosperity, soldiers and armies could be granted victory, competitors could be empowered to defeat their opponents in athletic contests. She was honored with every privilege and could dictate the outcome of almost any situation or event. Taking up the last spot are the Fates. The Morai, more commonly known as the Fates, were a trio of goddesses, and though their number was three, they effectively acted as one being, coalescing into a single purpose, personifying the inexorable destiny that imbued each person. Their parentage is ambiguous, one reason being that Hesiod contradicts himself in his own work, saying they were the children of Nyx, but then also saying that they were the children of Zeus and the titan goddess Themis. Clotho, the spinner, spun the life thread, Lachesis, the caster of lots, determined what a person's fate would be, measuring the thread, and Atropos, the unturnable one, ensured that a person's fate could not be changed, cutting the thread. The fates were so powerful because of the inevitability of what they manifested. They were the nexus to which the threads of every person's life was tethered, and even the gods were powerless to disrupt or prevent what was come to pass. Although there do seem to be exceptions to this, particularly with Zeus, who was sometimes called Zeus Moragates, the leader of the fates. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, leave your video suggestions down below.